and this should be fairly obvious, just like a lot of takes on my channel, you're either gonna really like what I'm about to say, or you're either gonna really hate it, no in-betweens. And this is the truth about Shadur Sanders at this current moment in time. Another night, come on man, don't act brand new around here, say it with me now, another prime time video. Well now that I think about it, is it really a prime time video? We're not even going to talk about Coach Prime. We're here to talk about Shadur Sanders, but it all ties into it together. You, you get what I'm trying to say. Anytime we talk about Shadur Sanders, Coach Prime, Colorado, anything to do with them, I consider it a prime time video. So there you have it, another night, another prime time video. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I don't got time to waste, you don't got time to waste, I said we just get straight into things. In tonight's video, we are gonna be talking about one topic and one topic only, and that is no other than Shadur Sanders. No introduction needed. If you don't know who this young man is, well, I don't know what to tell you, you gotta be living under a rock. He is not only the quarterback for the Buffaloes, but he's Neon Dion's son. Over the past couple weeks, and really the past couple months, I've been asked a question time after time after time after time. People will ask me this question on Instagram, Twitter, I get that a lot. By the way, go follow my Twitter, especially during the college football season. I really interact with you guys and try to interact with you guys a lot. And especially on YouTube as well, people ask me this question nonstop. And that question is, drum roll please. Yo Matt, how good do you think Shadur Sanders is going to be or how good is he already? Yo Matt, I understand he was good at Jackson State, but that's completely different. Now he's in the Power Five. Now he's playing in a pretty dang good conference. Yo Matt, Shadur Sanders, I know he's a talented player. I know he's Deion's son, but can he be an NFL quarterback? It is pretty much the same question, just rephrase, and people are asking, yo man, how good is Shadur Sanders? And in tonight's video, I'm going to answer that question, and I'm extremely confident in my answer. And this should be fairly obvious, just like a lot of takes on my channel, you're either going to really like what I'm about to say, or you're either going to really hate it, no in-betweens. What I'm about to say next will be controversial, so just strap in, buckle up. But whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. You know what isn't controversial? Cold. Hard. Fast. You know your boy Matt loves his facts because you can't dispute them, they're undisputable. In 2021, Shadur Sanders at Jackson State, yes, I'll talk about the competition in just a second, completed roughly 66% of his passes. That'll get the job done. 3,200 passing yards, yeah, that's pretty good as well. Had 30 touchdowns to only 8 INTs. Yeah, I think it's safe to say and we can agree that's not too shabby at all. Fast forward in time into last year, 2022, he was even better. Jumped up his completion percentage to over 70%, had 3,700 passing yards with 40 tutties to only 6 INTs. If 2021 wasn't good enough for you, he improved every single stat line in 2022. Now let me address this for all the naysayers. Well, man, he was playing at Jackson State, and yes, I'll be the first person to tell you, he was playing doo-doo competition. I don't care what any of you try to say, Jackson State was playing bums compared to the Power Five. It is what it is. If you disagree with that, you just don't know football. And I mean that in the most respectful way possible. I'm comparing, and let me, I should have given you some context. When I'm comparing these teams that uh, Shadur Sanders played at Jackson State, I'm comparing them to his new competition. And yes, the competition he played at Jackson State compared to teams like USC, Utah, and Oregon, yeah, it's not even in the same ballpark. There's a reason Jackson State doesn't play in the Power Five, and even Dion said it. They can't compete with teams like Alabama. They don't have the players. They don't have the guys. That should be common knowledge at this point. And yes, there is a big red flag, or not a red flag, my bad. There's a big question mark when it comes to the competition. Because yeah, he had 3,700 passing yards, 40 touchdowns, and 6 INTs, but who would you do it against? People are always going to knock him down and throw shade at him for that. And I wish I could say I don't understand it, but I do. Because the competition's weak. It is. So I'll play devil's advocate here. Let's say somebody wants to say, yo Matt, well, what about the competition? I'll give you that. Okay, he played weak competition. We can agree. Well, here's my counter argument to that. Did you actually watch him play, or did you just look at his stats and numbers and look at his competition? Because I myself, and y'all know this, I do tons of research. I watch a ton of film. I not only just watched dang near every single game that Shadur Sanders played at Jackson State, I rewatched them. And for those of you that are wondering, well, Matt, why did you rewatch them? And it's because I like to know what I'm talking about. So for that reason alone, I do do a lot of film watching because I pay attention to the minor stuff that most people don't pay attention to. And the one thing I noticed is that Shadur Sanders, and I could be wrong about this, but... I don't think it matters what kind of competition he was playing last year. He was going to put up great numbers. Now, also, let me state this. Would his numbers probably been decreased a little bit? Of course. But overall, everything I saw out of Shadur Sanders, 
I think he's an outstanding quarterback. So y'all can understand this. Let me put this into a better perspective and give you an example. What I'm trying to say is, let's say, for example, Patrick Mahomes, he went and played in a middle school game tomorrow and had 500 passing yards and five touchdowns. What would everybody say? Oh, well, yeah, he's playing middle schoolers. Of course he's going to throw for 500 yards and five touchdowns. Is he really that great? Who knows? Well, you see why that's controversial because... We've seen Patrick Mahomes do that in the NFL against the best of the best competition. It doesn't matter if Patrick Mahomes is playing middle school competition or NFL competition, he's going to dominate. That's where I'm getting to with Shadir Sanders. I didn't think last year it mattered if he played bad competition or good competition. I thought he was going to have a great season, and I thought he was one of the best quarterbacks in the country. That's what I personally saw with my own two eyes. Now, will he go out there next year and wet the bed and make me look dumb? I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see, but I, I just don't see that happening. Everything I've seen from this kid, he's got a good game. Before I started recording this video, I watched some more highlights, watched some more film, and the one thing that stood out to me the most was his accuracy. When I evaluate and I analyze quarterbacks, that's what I pay attention to the most. I don't care if you can throw the ball 85 yards, because you're only going to make maybe like four passes like that all season long. What I pay attention to is, okay, can you be accurate from 5 yards, 10 yards, 15, and 20, really accurate, completing about... 8 out of 10 passes, and then on your 40-yard bombs, can you complete 1 out of 3? That's a good percentage. And the thing that people didn't pay attention to last year was Shadir Sanders put the ball on the money every single time, or almost every single time. And what I'm saying, it reflects in the stat sheet. He completed over 70% of his passes. That's my favorite part of his game. From 25 yards in, he's extremely accurate. When it gets past 25 yards, is he a Kayla Williams completing about three out of four passes? Probably not. He's more of a two out of four, one out of four guy. But like I stated, how many passes all game long are you going to throw that are 30 yards or more? Maybe at max five. So I do like that a lot. For example, that's one of my area of concerns for Joe Milton, Tennessee's quarterback. Yeah, he's got a rocket launcher of an arm, but the dude's not extremely accurate when it comes to your short and medium passes. But getting back on track here with Mr. Shadur Sanders, it's very rare that when I'm evaluating a quarterback... I can't find a flaw in their game. Normally within a couple of minutes, I'm like, oh yeah, that's something he needs to work on. But with Shadur Sanders, I'm not saying he doesn't have any flaws, but for me at least, nothing stood out to me. But you're not going to see many flaws out of a guy who played for a team in Jackson State who is pretty much dominating all their competition. You'll see some of those flaws come out in this up and coming season with Colorado when all that pressure's on and they're playing some really good teams. But for now, at least, there's not too many flaws. And let me make this clear. It doesn't matter who you're evaluating. When you're taking a look at a guy who's completing over 70% of his passes, throwing for nearly 4,000 yards, has 40 touchdowns to 6 INTs, there's not going to be many flaws, period, the end. That's just all there is to it. And a lot of times, when there's no flaws in players, we point to, oh, well, they're cocky and they got an attitude, but <laughs> Shadur Sanders doesn't even have that. He's one of the humblest people you ever meet. It's kind of strange because his dad, some people would say, or I think most people would say, oh, yeah, Deion Sanders, he's cocky. But me, I don't call him cocky because if you say something and you can back it up, that's not cocky to me. The definition of cocky, for those of you that don't know this, is when you overestimate your abilities. Well, Coach Prime has never overestimated his abilities. If me and you were playing one-on-one -on -one in the backyard and I look you in your eyes and go, oh, I'm about to beat you 11-0, and then I go out there and beat you 11-0, that's not cocky. Cocky is when I say I'm going to beat you 11-0 and I lose 10 to 11. You see what I'm saying? But either way, Shadur Sanders, he's not even like that. He's very humble. And I like that a lot because that's what you want out of your quarterback. You don't want your quarterback out here acting like Deion Sanders did when he was in college in the NFL. As far as it goes for his athletic ability, I'm not going to speak on that. He's Deion Sanders' son. Come on, man. We know he's athletic. Now, with all that great stuff being said, here is my one area of concern. Shadur Sanders has won at every single level he's been at. Middle school, high school, and now college. All he's done is win, 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 win. He hasn't faced really any adversity. And that is a very dangerous thing, and I'll explain why. Why do we say that old men are wives? Because they've lived longer than us, they've been through some battle scars, and they've learned just because of obstacles and adversity in their life. A man who is 55 years old has way more knowledge than me, myself, who is 23 years old. Why is that? Just because of this one simple reason alone, He's lived through more struggles. He's been through more problems. And most people, not everybody, because you got some stubborn people out here, but most people learn after trials and tribulations. Well, and I think you know exactly where I'm going with this, Shadur Sanders hasn't really been through trials and tribulations. He hasn't been through too much adversity, and that does concern me. Because what's going to happen if they go out here against TCU and he throws two interceptions? Is he going to put his head between his knees and cry? I don't think he's going to do that, but we don't know. What if he goes out there against TCU, has a bad game, and then 
then the next week is a bad game. Is he going to fold like an almond under the pressure, or is he going to rise to the circumstance? I think a great example is Brett Favre. He was known for throwing 30 touchdowns in a season, but also he threw 30 interceptions. He was a gunslinger. He wasn't scared off of what happened to him in the past. My thing with Shadur is, I mean, take a look at his stats right here. He's thrown 70 total touchdowns in two years to only 14 INTs. I'm just really curious to see how he's going to react whenever he does throw a couple interceptions and maybe they start losing some games. That's going to be something to pay attention to. I think he will hit some bumps in the road. It's inevitable. He's going to hit some bumps. What I'm paying attention to, and this is for any man in this life, is how he reacts to those bumps. Is he going to throw an interception and say, you know what, that's my bad, bounce back and throw a touchdown? Or is he going to say, eh, you know what, I'm going to play a little more safe and not throw like he normally throws? It's kind of crazy that my only area of concern for Shadur has nothing to do with his talent, but it's just kind of a mindset thing. He's about to enter his third year as a starting college quarterback, and he hasn't faced too much adversity up until this point. Yeah, I know in the championship game they lost it, but still, that's not too much adversity. All in all, though, with all the information I've laid out and presented to you, let's answer the million-dollar question. Is Shadur Sanders, number one, a good quarterback? And number two, how good can he be? How good are we talking? Well, for me personally, and this is just me, yes, check mark that off. I think he's a good quarterback. I think most of us would agree with that, but let's answer the real question. How good are we talking? I have two answers to that question. Answer number one is, we'll have to wait and see. This is a similar situation as to when a five-star quarterback or a four-star recruit's coming out of high school. Yeah, they were really good in high school and they dominated the high school competition and that analogy in this situation is Shadur Sanders in the Jackson State level in that competition but how are they going to fare against some real deal power five competition? We see it all the time. Four and five star recruits, they turn out to be really good. But we also see this all the time. Four and five star recruits, they flop. So there's one of your answers. We're really just going to have to wait and see. The other side of me in answer number two is saying, yeah, I think this dude's the real deal. And he can be not only really, really, really good, but he can be great. And when I say great, I'm talking about you can start throwing them in the conversations of a Kayla Williams or who else? Who else am I missing? Who's oh yeah, Drake May. Who else? Who else am I missing? Oh yeah, Quinn Ewers. Guys like that. And this is the truth about Shadur Sanders at this current moment in time. Right now, he is a good quarterback. I am 103% confident when I say that. But is he a great quarterback at this current moment in time? No. We're going to have to see a little bit more before we throw him in that conversation. And I think that's fair to say. But I will say this, and I stand 10 toes down on this. As far as it goes for the naysayers saying he's going to struggle in the Pac-12, I just don't see that happening. I really don't. As a matter of fact, I'll say this. I'd be shocked if Shadur Sanders struggled in the Pac-12. And just like I've said time after time in this video, we'll have to wait and we'll see. Let me know your thoughts down below. But, uh,